Are you looking to create an action log in Excel? Are you not quite sure of what you need to include or perhaps even where to start? Well, either way, you've come to the right place because today I'm going to be walking you through how to build an action log template in Excel. Now, this template is great for noting down any tasks that come from meetings, informal conversations or emails. So it's great for just getting everything kind of documented. And I will just say before I proceed to the actual building out of the template that there'll be a link in the description below where you can buy this template and download it for instant use. It will be less than a cup of coffee and that will not only save you time, but it also helps support the channel. So it'd be much appreciated. And I just thought I'd let you know that if you didn't want to, to kind of go through the next five or 10 minutes or so. But with that said, if you do have that time or want to learn how to build it yourself, then let's quickly run through it. So I like to start by just kind of naming the first tab action log. I'm gonna call the second one um, drop downs. We can, you can call that anything you like, but we'll get onto that in a moment. But we, we want a second tab basically to give us the ability to, to set up some drop downs. We, we, will, we'll, we will walk through that when we get around to it. At the start, uh, or at the top I should say, I would recommend that you add some kind of key details just so that uh, any stakeholders that you send this to or anyone you kind of need to pass it on to has some information related to the project. It doesn't have to be in depth, um, you know, or too, too, you know, too much here, but I, I do like to just bring this out and call this out at the start. What I like to do and suggest you do is put kind of uh, all borders around this. We'll do all borders around this as well. I'm just use this here up the top here. And I like to put this in kind of a, a gray color just to differentiate it um, so, and, and perhaps bold that as well. So I'm just using the formatting at the top in the home rib tab on the ribbon at the top just to, to give somewhere for you to enter this information. So that could be what the project's about, the implementation type, what's you know the, the key deliverable. Um, it's likely your organization has a specific project name um, for what you're looking to, to achieve here. Project manager, of course, is anyone who is who is kind of working on the project. It could be, or who's responsible for this particular template. So um, you could even put template owner or action log owner here if you wanted to. I'm just gonna put that in here um, just to give you the option. And as I say, if you do proceed to download the template, that will be in there. So let's get on to building the actual table out. So we're gonna drop down a couple of rows. Let's start from, from row nine. And what we're gonna do here is, this is gonna be the first column, and we are going to call this action ID. Now, as the name suggests, this is just going to be a unique uh, reference so that uh, each kind of action has its own reference that we can kind of refer to should we need to. Uh, it just basically differentiates them and it's just, yes, yeah, a good reference point. So again, we're gonna go with a, I think what we'll do in this case is we'll go for a slightly, uh, we're gonna go for a slightly, we'll go for a, um, we're going to go for a green just for the table here, uh, differentiate, differentiate it from the top. So we've got action ID here. Now you can set up kind of any syntax you like, uh, something like, you know, AO1 is, is great. And because of the way Excel works, if I drag this down, it's obviously you can see there, um, it's just going to obviously update. So we're going to set that up like that. For now, I'll just put a couple in. Um, I'll put three in actually, just to give us some something to work from. Um, but of course you can drag that down from the top one when you start building this out yourself. So the next uh, column I'd suggest you have is the action, the action itself. Again, I'm gonna put that in green. And if I actually just do, if, I, if you select that row here and click bold, then everything, every time, time I type in here is gonna be bold by default. So that will save us a little bit of time. The next one we're gonna do assigned to, if I can spell correctly. I will need to, to and uh, add the coloring or the background for each column just to, because uh, we don't want that obviously to apply to every row in here. It wouldn't make sense. So I'm, I will just be clicking that as we go. Uh, I might not mention it each time, but just 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 remember that's what I'm doing here. So we've got assigned to, um, I'm gonna put an assigned date in as well, because uh, I think that's, that can be useful uh, data to collect. We are going to put a due date because that can differ depending on, um, yeah, depending on the action. Um, we are also going to put in here, we're going to put a comments or notes where, and what I would like to suggest you do is just bring this out the width because it just gives more, more text space 
Um, and we're going to wrap this as well, actually. I'm going to select all of this. I'm going to wrap. Um, and what that does is if we start, tech, uh, start adding text here and it goes beyond this line, then it's going to drop below and, and, and expand this out without obviously being blurry or kind of pulling across to the other columns. Uh, let's put this in the green. So we've got the comments and notes. You can you can remove notes or comments. You know, you could just do what I mean by that is you could just wipe that out if you wanted to. Um, it's just giving you an option, really. Uh, so we've got the, the assigned to, assigned date, the due date. Um, and at the end here, I'd recommend three different columns. The first one I would suggest being a priority. The second one I'd suggest would be status. And the final one, this is optional. Uh, I'm going to show you some nice bit of formatting, which can, can look great and, and can be done um, if you wanted to. But you could delete this as well, or maybe not even include it all together. But you could put in a, a percentage complete to give someone an idea of, of what's happening with the action. Um, and it just it's more of a, an in-depth version of the status, if you like. It, it's a bit more granular. It pro pro probably provides a little bit more, um, yeah, to anyone looking at this more of a, an insight into what's going on. Now, I'm going to put all grid lines around this. Um, let's bring this out a little bit. Um, we don't need that one, do we? So we'll delete that. Uh, I'll put um, the grid line, sorry, not grid line, sorry. I put the borders around the whole table. Of course, we don't have action items all the way down here, um, but it's like you'll kind of populate this. Uh, I'll actually get rid of some. We, we're going to go down to about here just to give us a little bit of extra room without being kind of too much. Uh, delete. Um, don't forget to hit save. And yes, let's start building out some of the drop downs, which I mentioned at the start of the video. So in the drop downs, there are two types we need to set up, one being priority and one being uh, status. What way around did I have it in here? Yeah, that's the right way around. We could put this again, in, let's just put this in green. This is purely for the drop down alone. Um, we don't need this for anything else. Um, so it doesn't really matter how it looks, but it's more just a, of a key to refer to. When it comes to priorities, the main kind of three you're likely to use are low, medium and high. Uh, you may want to kind of add some additional ones, but it's unlikely to be required. Um, I'm actually gonna put some bordering around here as well. And let's get the statuses. So with status, again, these might differ depending on your project or organization, but these are commonly shared um, among different organizations and they're kind of good statuses to include or to consider. So we've got not started, in progress. We are gonna have um, uh, on hold, complete or completed we could put, and we can put canceled as well. Um, because you know these actions could be cancelled there's no reason why uh, they might go ahead so I'm gonna put this uh, bordering around we're gonna hit save again and now we just need to set up those drop downs so you would have recalled that I set up the priority and status columns earlier so what we want to do here I'm actually gonna drag this down to row 50 or so um, again you might need to change this depending on depending on how many actions you want to include in your log um, but what I'm essentially doing here um, actually actually I'm gonna go back a sec. I'm gonna do it to the whole column, and then we can remove it from certain certain uh, from from certain um, cells themselves, so it doesn't appear. What I'm talking about will make sense in a moment. So I'm gonna select the column. What we're gonna do here is we need to set up some data validation. So to do that, I believe it is in the data uh, tab on the ribbon, and you can see it. So data validation, and what we want to do here is click this drop down, and we want to click data validation. We want to allow list because we want it to be list uh, options. Now the source, so what you want to do is select list and then click in the source. Once we're in here, you can see that kind of icon to, to suggest we're, we're in there. Click the drop downs and you'll see it, go, it, it enters automatically equals drop downs exclamation mark. And that basically means look within the drop downs sheet and we are doing the priority first. So I'm left clicking here and dragging down the only options. We don't want priority because that's not a priority. Uh, that's not gonna be an option, sorry, that we want. We only want low, medium, and high. So what we're basically saying is look within this sheet, within that cell reference for the items to include in the list. Press okay. Now, you'll see we don't actually want it up here or here or here or here or here. We wouldn't want it here either. But every other cell in the, in the, 
in the sheet is fair game and where we would likely need this drop down. So as you'll see here, if I now click one of these, you can see the options. Fantastic. So if we want to remove the, and, and it's obviously going to apply to every single row underneath here. So it's a, the reason I've done it this way is we set it up once. And what I'll quickly do is remove that um, data validation from these particular cells so that it doesn't appear here. You don't have to do this. It's something it, it would annoy me, to be honest. So I'm going to put any value here. And you'll now see it only applies to everything underneath that fold, if you like, underneath that, that heading. Let's save, don't forget to save your work. Right, so that's good. Now we just need to do status. So again, same process, select this column here. We're gonna go data. We're gonna go data validation, select this button. We're gonna go list, source, left clicked in there. Back to drop downs. the other options here. Okay. And again, it, these are now our options for status, which is fantastic. And we want to remove it from here. So data ribbon again, data validation, and click the data validation button. And we're gonna choose from allow any value, press okay. And it's removed it from here, but it should still apply for all down there. So that's great. We now got a priority and a status for each of our different actions. I'm actually gonna expand this out because that's likely to be quite a bit of text. And you can, if you hold shift on your keyboard and select several columns at a time, you can kind of change widths simultaneously. Um, so, so that can be useful to know. I'm gonna bring these out a little bit. Um, and yeah, that's kind of great. And then the final one is percentage complete. And I would just like to show you, um, this, this is kind of useful um, in terms of just a visualization or, visu or visu visualizing data. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna select uh, those, actually what we'll do, yeah, we'll select those for now. Press uh, home. And what we're gonna want to do is in this number section, actually what we're gonna, I'll do this first. We're gonna go like this. So click the drop down. And we're going to click percentage and I'm going to change these again because we want that as general. That's it. So what I did there, select the whole column. So it includes every row within the column. And then I basically just switched out for those top. It's, it's following the similar process to doing that. But what, as you can see here, we've got percentage here and we've got general here because this is just almost a, an area where we can add data or, or text or information that we see fit. You could even put a, a company logo in there if you wanted to make it look more professional. Um, but you don't obviously have to, it's, it's, it's completely up to you. So what we've done here is we've changed this to a percentage. So what, what that will do is if I put 25 in, as you can see, it's, it's, it automatically made it a percentage point. So if I put that in here, 25, because that's general, it's just the number, it doesn't make any sense. Whereas here, if I put in you know 34, it just it just adds the formatting, it adds the percentage, and it just makes it, it just makes it much more, you know, more applicable. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to do one more thing. We're gonna set up some conditional formatting. So what we want to do here is click conditional formatting, data bars, and we want to click more rules. Actually, we're gonna use, we're gonna use green because I think it looks great. Uh, no, 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 one second, sorry. Uh, manage rules. So let's, let's remove, I did that by mistake there. What we're gonna do, we're gonna do it all again. So we're gonna do this column here, conditional formatting, manage rules, new rule, oh no, sorry. Conditional formatting, data bars, I'm gonna select this one here. So I've, I've selected the data bar for this column. Now if I go back into conditional formatting and we go manage rules, so we can see this here. So we want this up to apply to the whole column, um, which is great. Again, it's obviously gonna to apply to this area here. We could remove that. Uh, what we could do is we could just do, do that. And then we could just put that to like a thousand for now. Uh, I'm gonna play, hit, hit apply. So it doesn't apply to this section here. Then what we want to do here is if we go edit rule. So what you want to do here is ensure this is selected. We want to change the type to percent and we want the lowest value to be one. And you can change the, you know, the fill, whether you want it to be a gradient fill or a solid fill. I like gradient fill, it looks better and I'll show you why in a moment. Keep the color the same, keep everything the same. All you need to do is change that percent and change that to one, press okay. Hit apply, okay. Now if we start putting data in here, you will see the bar starts to appear, um, which is obviously fantastic. Um, and it all kind of works um, on a, a scale, if you like. So 100% being full, say 25% would obviously be 25%. So it just kind of looks great. It's kind of visually appealing and it just makes more 
more sense to anyone who's kind of coming in here uh, and wants kind of a visual representation of where things are. Obviously status, if we put this as, you know, in progress, you know, is that 20% complete, 30%? You don't know. So the percentage complete just gives us that additional, um, gives, gives us the additional insight really. Uh, and as you can see here, they're all kind of inter interdependent on one another. So yeah, that's really, really useful. Um, so that's now in place. If you were to download the template, you'd get that too. So really that's how to create an action um, log in Excel. Of course, I could start adding some actions here. We could, you could, what you could do just for a few, a few quick tips before we finish is you could put, you could put in a date that, that you know, that it, it was agreed or happened. So you could put something like, so today's date would be 15, 12, semicolon, and you could put, it was agreed with the client to dot, dot, dot. This has been assigned to me. I'm just gonna put, that's my name. <laughs> And then we're going to put the assigned date as the 15th of the 12th. So I'm just sorry, I just wanted to show you an example of how this is how this would be done. Let's say it's due next week. And if you're in America, I'm very, very sorry that I've done this with um, the syntax of UK. So as an example, I've got month in the middle and that's the day of the month. So in America, this is a bit confusing to me, but I believe that makes a lot more sense to you. So that would be obviously... Um, the 22nd of December. So you get the idea here, uh, and that's obviously date of recording. Um, this may not air straight away, uh, just bear that in mind. Comments, you could put something like, uh, uh, deliverable will occur upon completion of product launch. Just an example. Priority, this is high priority. The, the clients asked for it. Status, we're underway, we've got things going, and we're 25% complete. So that's a quick example. I will wipe that out just for the template itself, but I just wanted to run through an example just to show you how it kind of looks and how it'd work. But yeah, that is essentially how to um, create an action log in Excel. If you do want this template without having to build it yourself, click that link in the description below. It'd be less than, a, uh, less than the price of a cup of coffee. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this and you've got if you've got this far, then you've likely built this in real time. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do hit the like button if you did. And don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel. If you head over to my channel, I do actually have a playlist called Excel. Uh, and if you head over there, you'll notice that there's a plenty of different uh, project management artifacts that I've built in Excel, um, which you can follow along with. So as an example, if you need to build a project plan, um, there's one there, there's a risk register as well. So if you need to build those kind of artifacts out and not, not sure how or what to do, then you can kind of follow along there as well. Um, so with all of that said, uh, I hope you have an excellent day.